Hey, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein, and today we're going to talk about the dangers of going into business with your spouse or romantic partner. I have a lot of clients, colleagues, friends who have either started a business with their romantic partner or has have brought in their spouse or romantic partner into a business that they already have. There can be great advantages to this. It may be that your spouse or partner hates their job and you want to provide something else for them to do. It may be that they have great uh, skills, talents, resources that you can use in your business. You know, you may be the kind of person who creates content like this and you want someone else who's really good at marketing or really good at back end. Could be one person is the marketing person and one person is the tech person who writes the app. There can be great ways to share the duties of running this business with another person who you already know. Sometimes you just want to work with your spouse. You don't ever see them right now. And so you want to spend more time with your partner or spouse. It could be an immigration strategy that you want to bring in your spouse as an employee so you can go for their visa that way. It may also be that you want just a different lifestyle. You want to travel full time. You want to move to a different city, whatever it is. And your spouse or partner working for your business means that you have more flexibility in your life. So these are all great reasons to bring in somebody else, but it doesn't always work out. I have clients, colleagues, friends where it's worked amazingly and it's helped them take their business up to the next level. And I know many people, including some clients where I had to work on the back end for this, where it was an absolute horrible mess. So what are the dangers of going into business with your spouse or romantic partner? And how can you try to mitigate those problems? Problem number one is who is captain of the ship? Who is in charge? This can create a weird dynamic if you have a relationship with your business partner. And we're not, it's not necessarily just a spouse or romantic partner. It also could be a sibling. It also could be a best friend. But the idea is, is that you already have this other relationship that has its own power dynamic. And now you're introducing a different aspect to this relationship as part of a business. You're going to need to really figure out what roles each person has and who is the boss, at least for each area. So I've seen it where it's a successful business where one person is the CEO, the boss. Sometimes it's because that business was pre-existing, the relationship. And then they bring in their spouse or partner in a very specific role. That person is the tech person. That person is the marketing person. The idea is they have a very specific role and you're still the CEO or the president or, or whatever your title is. I've also seen it done well where someone brings in their spouse as an employee. Just they have other employees too, and the spouse is the employee, they're still the CEO. Where it tends to run into problems is where there is no specific designation of each person's role. They're kind of just partners, equal partners, maybe because they're starting it together. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that, but the problem can be is who makes the final decisions on things. If it's purely 50-50 on everything, what if you don't agree, which is true for marriage as well as in a business, you can have lots of issues with this. One way you can do it if it is 50-50 is each person is in charge of a different aspect of the business. So one person is in charge of the back end, one person is in charge of the front end, one person is in charge of marketing, one person is in charge of tech. Then the second big problem is you're spending all your time together so you're always at work. If this can, this can happen if you just work from home, but it also can definitely happen if you're in a relationship with the person that you started this business with, because you can always talk about work. You are always doing work stuff. It can take over your entire relationship in life very, very easily. So what I generally recommend is you have work time and you have non-work time. You have rules for when you don't talk about work so your relationship doesn't just degrade into being business partners instead of being a spouse or having other kind of romantic partnership. Danger number three is that all of your issues in your romantic relationship are now magnified because you're always at work. So any of the things that people find about are going to get carried over to work potentially. If you're having difficulties 
they will become magnified because you're with that person all the time or potentially working with them all the time. If there's issues in your relationship that you've been able to avoid dealing with because both of you go to work separately and you kind of avoid these problems, you're not gonna be able to avoid them anymore. Now, really the way to deal with this is to not avoid those problems. It may be that you need to go to counseling together so you can talk about all the issues in your relationship that are affecting both your relationship personally at home as well as now your working relationship. Because if you don't deal with these things, it's not gonna just mess up your personal life, it's gonna also mess up your business. Issue number four is people who get into a business with their spouse or romantic partner have a tendency to avoid formalities in their business. This could also happen if your business partner is just is a friend or a sibling or something like that, some other family member. But if you go into business with somebody and you don't have a partnership agreement or an LLC operating agreement, if you don't define roles, if you don't be very careful about how you take money out of the business so you're not commingling assets, it's going to be lots of problems is a short version of that. So you want to make sure that you, you observe corporate formalities, that you have agreements in writing, just as if you would with a stranger you were going into business with. You want to paper trail all this stuff because you just don't know what's going to happen in the future. And also because you don't want someone to, to try to get at your personal assets because your business is kind of run in this overly casual way. So make sure that you observe those formalities like having a partnership or a partnership agreement or operating agreement or whatever it is that's appropriate for the business entity that you have so you don't run into those issues. The fifth is that people who are in romantic relationships tend to avoid the question of what are we going to do if this doesn't work. I think a lot of people are very romantic about their romantic relationships and they think it's going to last forever and maybe it will, but the business won't last forever. I mean, it's not likely that when you're 95, you're going to be working on this business. Something will have happened to transition it. So I can guarantee it's not going to go forever, at least with you running it. So what's going to happen if this doesn't work, either if your relationship doesn't work or if the business doesn't work? People talk about this more when they go into business with uh, a colleague because it's they're not as romantic about that relationship, even though sometimes they avoid it then too. So you wanna look at in your partnership agreement, operating agreement, whatever it is, having some kind of framework for what if this doesn't work? What if one of us becomes disabled? What if one of us can't work on this business? What if we break up? In a perfect world, everyone would have some kind of prenuptial agreement and this would be part of that. Not necessarily just in that prenup, it would also have agreements in the business itself. This is can get complicated depending upon the kind of business it is, but you don't want your business to go under the same time your relationship goes under. And I've seen this happen multiple times. It is a absolute horrible mess that's magnified because you can't depend upon your revenue source because it's the business you have with that soon to be X. So you want that built into the framework of your business. If this relationship doesn't work, if business doesn't work, what's going to happen? And you want to look at that now when you still like this person and you both want what's best for each other, as opposed to having a absolute horrible fight later that ruins this business. So you're not just broken up romantically, but your business is also gone. So when it really comes down to it, it is definitely possible to have a successful business and a successful relationship with your spouse or romantic partner in both areas where you have a personal relationship and a business relationship. I've seen it many times. I have many friends and clients who have done this successfully, but it's something you have to do in a very conscious way to address those issues because they're in every aspect of your life. Again, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. If you have any questions about this, feel free to leave them below and I'll try to point you in the right direction. Thumbs up if you found this video helpful and subscribe if you'd like any more videos for small business owners and entrepreneurs. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.